diverting band waste. Now that you're savvy with recycling, let's explore more waste stream diversions that prevent certain things from getting into our landfills. The logical place to start is with things that are banned from our landfills. Tires are a banned item, and they go to a processor that actually grinds them up, and they make a variety of products, anywhere from horse stable matting to rock climbing gym materials, playground matting, just another resource that can be reused and reintroduced into the marketplace. Hmm, anything else? Some of our landfill banned materials included lead acid batteries, waste oil, and appliances. We also have yard materials banned from landfill disposal and electronics, and so they take up a lot of space. Some of those materials can also have hazardous components, and so we want to make sure that those are not put into the landfill and contribute to our environment. So things like electronics may contain toxic materials, things like heavy metals, lead, mercury, cadmium, chromium, things of that nature. Luckily, many communities offer collection events for these and other banned wastes and some of it's scary stuff. Well, today we're holding our annual Household Hazardous Waste Clean Sweep event. It's a place where residents can bring chemicals they might have laying around their house and safely dispose of them. It's important because if there wasn't a place like this to bring them to, it might end up getting dumped in a ditch or behind their garage or brought to a landfill, all things that harm the environment. What kinds of household toxic stuff are we talking about? There's an oil-based paint. Clean up would you need to use a mineral spirits or something along those lines. Those types of paints are considered flammable maybe use gasoline, paint thinners. We have corrosive uh, materials, which are uh, like your drain cleaners, reactive type of uh, chemicals, your bleaches, peroxides, and of course, toxic materials, pesticides, your herbicides, insecticides, materials like that, that uh, could, could be dangerous to the public. Um, and also material like mercury or even, even lead. Well, that solution is fine for typical homeowners, but my uncle's a farmer and you should see the chemicals in his barn. Uh, we had over 30 farms and businesses show up. Uh, they come with larger quantities and they have the same challenges that our residents do in safely disposing of their chemicals. So we invite them in the day before and we safely offload them. So it's really the combination of different waste reduction streams that help divert all kinds of banned and unwanted stuff from our landfills. Well, I think first and foremost, we run a recycling center and two yard compost waste sites. Uh, second, we run programs uh, like waste tire collection, electronics collection, mercury collection, um, as well as prescription drug collection. And this year, we're going to hit the milestone of one million pounds of toxic chemicals that have been collected and safely disposed of, something our whole community should really be proud of. That clearly covers tons of hazardous wastes, but I think we left out some emerging waste products that shouldn't go in landfills. One of the emerging wastes that we're seeing that is actually problematic for the waste collection industry in, in general are lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries. Uh, most devices you, you have in your house uh, nowadays are, are lithium powered uh, batteries. They say that a lithium battery can still retain 40% of this energy left in the battery uh, when the battery is disposed. So even though the battery cannot hold a charge, there is uh, still plenty enough energy in there that energy can convert and cause a spark to create a fire. Here's an important one you might not think of. Most appliances like dehumidifiers and air conditioners can contain the refrigerant Freon. So they need specialty recycling to remove and recycle those gases, along with the metals from those appliances. It's because Freon can damage the ozone layer in our atmosphere that protects us from UV radiation. Who would have thought that protecting our ozone layer and life on the planet was part of their job? Cool. And speaking of protecting our atmosphere, what do you suppose happens with all those gases like methane being generated from our landfills? Um, in terms of the gas, if you look around a landfill, it looks like a big hill with a bunch of pipes sticking out of it. Every one of those pipes is a gas well. And so it's a pipe that's drilled down through the waste. It's got a bunch of holes or perforations in it. And at the top, we apply vacuum. So it's like a big straw that's sucking gas out of the garbage. We have to collect that gas and we have to destroy it. We have to destruct it so it's not damaging to the environment. That gas is 50% methane, which is extremely harmful to the ozone, to the atmosphere. So we have to destruct that gas. Oftentimes that can be done on a flare or an engine. 
Um, we look at it also as an energy source. That's methane, that's energy. The natural gas that comes into your home is 96% methane. Our gas is 50% methane, so we have an energy source. So we can use that to either run a generator, produce electricity, or you take that, clean it up, produce uh, clean natural gas, compress that. Now you have compressed natural gas, you run vehicles on it. So you can run vehicles, you can produce electricity, you can, you can run boilers, it's an energy source. So we're destroying that gas, protecting the environment, and we're producing renewable energy. What you see behind me really is not only garbage. Your trash is my cash. The gas we extract from the landfill, we generate three and a half million dollars worth of selling electricity to the local power company. Trash to cash, very cool. It looks like the fictional scenes from the movie Back to the Future, where Doc Brown converts trash using a flux capacitor into vehicle fuel for his DeLorean, isn't so fictional after all. So what happens when we collectively divert all those things from ending up in the landfill behind us? We're actually shrinking the tons of organic, recyclable, and hazardous waste that don't belong in our landfills. Okay then, the next question is, what realistic steps can you take in your daily life to help improve the waste stream going in here and be a more responsible waste steward? That's what's next. <laughs>